ConsumerCellular.com slash The Herd. Check it out. $20 a month. Consumer Cellular for talk, text, and data. Boot the loser. Go with the winner. Switch to Consumer Cellular. 20 bucks a month. Um, so Baker Mayfield is now an L.A. Ram. They picked him off waivers. According to various reports, they were the only team that was interested uh, for a couple of years, three three years or so, I talked about Baker Mayfield, I swear to God, every other day during the football season. I thought he was interesting. He was from Oklahoma. He was a number one pick. He was polarizing. He was making Cleveland relevant, which they haven't been for most of my radio TV career. Uh, but I said when he left Cleveland, I wouldn't talk about him as much because he's just not that interesting. Carolina's weak, and he has proven to be overdrafted. The Rams right now are boring. I don't think with a bad old line and limited weapons, he'll find it any easier than he did in Carolina. I don't have a strong Baker take. I honestly wish him well. I don't root against professional athletes. Russell Westbrook can drive me crazy. Uh, Baker Mayfield drove me crazy, but he's a nice kid. He's married. Uh, three of their four Ram games are on some primetime TV. He'll probably make them a little more compelling. Uh, you know, my, my guess is everybody loves a comeback story, so he'll find a, a few people that'll grab onto him. But uh, Andy Reid, offensive coaches like to resurrect people. Andy Reid resurrected Michael Vick's career. Go ask Michael Vick. He did. Sean Payton loved Taysom Hill. Uh, Sean McVay saved Jared Goff's career. Josh McDaniels. Everybody told him, don't draft Tebow. And he drafted Tebow. Offensive coaches love to find young quarterbacks and prove all their doubters wrong. Um, I think it's too little and too late for Baker Mayfield. Yes, I was right. I didn't think it was a strong take, although I got tons of pushback for saying a kind of short guy with an average arm who's cocky probably won't be worth the number one pick. I also said I thought his maturity would be his downfall. He had, sometimes was snarky, not very likable. Uh, one of the things that was a revelation, I thought he would be a fairly accurate distributor of the football. His accuracy was always underwhelming and got significantly worse as his offensive lines maybe got a little worse, and the Rams' O-line is just not very good, and the team and the offensive personnel, what's left of it, is just not very good. I don't have any anti or strong Baker Mayfield take. I wish him well. His career is sort of what I thought it would be, and here is J-Mac with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news! This is the Herdline News. From one bad quarterback to a good one, Aaron Rodgers. His future has been in question all season, despite he signed that contract extension earlier this year. Rodgers has said it will be a mutual decision <laughs> on whether he returns in 2023. And Packers GM Brian Gutekunst says they'll have a discussion about his future in the offseason. Here's what he said when asked about Rodgers. Do you want Aaron back next year, or is that something that you just don't decide until the offseason? Well, certainly that's an offseason. Off, uh, season kind of decision, but surely, yeah, we want all our guys back, and um, you know, we made a big commitment to him this offseason, and um, so that was obviously, you know, something that was really important to us, but like we've talked about in, in, in the past, I mean, this is something we'll sit down with him after the season, and it'll be something we do together and, and move forward that way. <laughs> what kind of answer is that? What is What on earth is he saying? You know how you answer that? Do we want Aaron Rodgers back? Like, do we want the reigning back-to-back MVP who led us to three straight 13 win seasons. Do we want him back? What do you think, reporter guy? That's all he has to say. What does he well, have to say this gobbledygook for? Well, because with Aaron, I think what I'm about to say is true. You kind of have to walk on eggshells. You got to make sure it's not offensive. You got Jordan Love hovering back there. Aaron's <laughs> expensive and older. I think this is Jordan. one of the, I think nobody likes to work with somebody they have to walk on eggshells around and i think this is part of the fissure in the relationship is every time those packer people go to the microphone it's just word salad they just don't want to say anything that offends aaron wait, wait, wait let me ask you if he, you got to walk on eggshells around this guy why back up the brinks last summer and pay him the money well you had no options you can't be terrible it's the only game in town you didn't have any options. You backed yourself in a corner. If Jordan Love could play, you'd have let him go. <laughs> if Jordan Love ended up being what Aaron was behind Favre, you'd have let him go. But so, Jordan Love at that okay. point couldn't play. So you're Gutekunst, and you're looking around, talking to the floor, and everybody says, well, what, what, what do we do here? Do we trade him? Deal with the dead cap hit? I've do told we just you, ride him out? I've told you Tennessee's the landing spot. I've got a theory on this later in the show. I think you're going to like it. On Tennessee and Rodgers? Uh, on, on the Green Bay situation... 
I just I'm going to throw it at you in in 30 minutes from now. I think because we both like theories and you know. Oh, I love the it's, it's looking it's, to the future. Yeah. yeah. So I've got one on what I think Green Bay's thinking a little with Jordan Love. With the, we we cooked it up this morning and it makes a lot of sense. And I think you're going to really like it. And it's going to be one of those where it lands and you're going to go, oh wow. That's really possible. Okay. I'm excited to do it. Top of next day. I hope it's not Jordan Love waiting in the wings. Uh, it's got it's got to be better than that. Uh, next up, the Bucks made use of their no huddle offense Monday night, pulling off a miraculous game winning drive, two two touchdown drives in the final six minutes against the Saints. And after seeing that no huddle offense, Todd Bowles is committed to implementing it more going forward. Here's what he had to say. Well, we've implemented it some. We did it against Atlanta. I thought we did a little bit of it was either Carolina or Pittsburgh as well. We can implement it more. Yeah, it all starts with the quarterback. You know, he can dissect things. He's seen it plenty of times. I guess that the urgency clicked even more so in the two minute being down that way, and guys just locked in. You know, you want to do that the entire game, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So, you know, we're just glad we got it in the end. Defensive coach. I mean, two weeks ago against Cleveland, where was the no huddle offense in the final 45 seconds with what, two timeouts? What, what were you doing, dude? What, what was worse, Todd Bowles' offense in the first three quarters or Dennis Allen's offense in the last five minutes? Like two well, defensive uh, coaches. Let, let's be clear. It's Byron Leftwich is the offensive coordinator. Him and Brady have been butting heads. I'd be really curious if Brady just said, you know what, screw what this guy's talking about. I'm running the two-minute <laughs> drive here. I'm Tom Brady, the GOAT. Uh, Tampa's got some problems. Um, they have a big one this week, by the way. Um, one of the better games. It's, a, it's pretty good. There's a, it's a tough slate for gambling, but it's only Wednesday. All right, final story. Ah, the Miami Dolphins. Tua Tungavaloa missed the final series against the Niners with a quote-unquote ankle injury. With the upcoming matchup against the Chargers, Mike McDaniel is confident Tua will be good to go against Justin Herbert. We'll just be mindful of uh, uh, of what he does. Um, really, you're looking at Wednesday. Um, just making sure that we don't do anything um, to do, have it have any setbacks. You know breaking the pocket and whatnot, but um, uh, very confident. Um, don't, don't anticipate any sort of setback that would uh, negate him playing um, in the upcoming football match. I am a buyer on two of this week because anytime you play in a big TV game, Dolphins Niners was a very high, you know, interest marquee game. Tua looked rattled and overwhelmed. Now the market sells on him. Miami is not going to face a defense that good for the rest of the season. In fact, there's an argument they won't face a defense. I mean, the Jets are good. They're not that. So this this is that defense is built to stop Tua. A smaller quarterback um, missing his tackles. That that was a worst case scenario for Tua. Miami is a good football team. Total by the rest of the way. Mm. Anytime a good team has a competent quarterback, two is competent, and they have a bad performance, I'm always buying them the next week. Interesting. Well, everybody's selling the Chargers as well. They lose to the Raiders. Well, Brandon I, Staley's job I, is on the line. Yeah. I, I got d- still no word on Bosa. What, what's going on? I mean, I Bosa it. hasn't played in months. I have. His vi- brother just wrecked the Dolphins' offensive line last week. Can you imagine Bosa and Khalil Mack in this game? They would. They would kill Tua. I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going on with the Chargers, but I don't know. I think we're on the opposite sides on this one. This is one of those kitchen sink games for Staley. He knows I better win this damn game because he could get, he could end up tied oh, with the I Raiders. Think, after I think this. if he loses this game, your GM and your owner have to have a meeting. Yeah, you have to sit down and go, okay, we're we're bad on his side of the ball, and we're what would they be five and seven? Uh, I think they're six and six, so or six and seven. Yeah, I mean, I I I think you're getting to a time when. The owner and the front office has to sit down and make real decisions and start looking at the market. Like last week's game, Miami with San Fran was huge. I think this could be one of the biggest games of the month of December. So much on the line for Staley. You've talked about the potential coaches that want this job, maybe Harbaugh and Peyton. There's a lot riding on the line for the Chargers and Miami as well. Tua needs to get his confidence back, Colin. I don't care what people say, oh, Tua's fine. It was one bad game. He looked totally shook in that well, game. I he, mean, he was a turnover machine. He was scared, happy feet in the pocket, well, missing on easy throws. This. If you fought Tyson in his early days, <laughs> I mean, even Michael Spinks, yeah, you got happy feet. Like you could, you could feel the hit before it arrived. 
You could your next fight. If you didn't fight Tyson, you were back to being you. I think when you face the Niners, as Kyler Murray, you're small. You've been banged up. I think they're totally intimidating. They're the, they're literally the '85 Bears. I think. I mean, you watch film on these guys. Everybody's physical. Hell, they beat each other up in practice. They're never healthy. So I think San Francisco is one of those teams that you get a little heat early, they get into your head fast, and it's not like Ghost. You're seeing Bosa and Armstead and Fred Warner. They are so physical that I Tua will never – I think Tua was completely rattled and welcome to the club. A lot of young <laughs> quarterbacks would be rattled against that defense. By the way, Miami has Buffalo on the road next week. Um, Putting that out there. All right. J-Mac with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd So I, top news. of the hour, I'm going to give you my, my Jordan Love Aaron Rodgers take, and I think it's really interesting. So yesterday, or the day before, John Robinson got fired, and Jason and I were on the show, and you don't get, GMs don't get fired in the middle of the season. That's just not the way the game works. And we don't talk a lot of Titans. They're not a very, they're not a fun team to watch. But everybody's struggling.